All right. So, Liz, do you want to go next? Because I really want to oh, see if I'm sure. right about this hat. <laughs> okay. Um, Sorry. This. Uh, it's not really a hat. It's a. It's just a headband. Okay. Yeah. No. Wait, I'm okay, this way. I'll give everybody a Ooh, full look. Black feathers. So you all can see it. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of my homage or plain theme to the FX Hulu anthology series Feud, Ooh. Capote versus the Swans. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, that is what I was going to guess, but I like that you're trying right. to... A little themed yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, so this is season two, season one of the feud was um, whatever happened to Baby Jane, which was the Joan Crawford, Betty Davis feud, which was fabulous. These are Ryan Murphy productions. And he has his level of taste and interest. And man, when he decides I'm going to focus on something, I mean, you cannot be my friend if you don't like this. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> I was watching this. I'm like, this is so delicious. There's not even savor watching because, of course, it's the Hulu format or the FX. It's like one a week. You're like, ah! Oh, my God. Well, wait, explain what it is because I know a teeny bit about right. what it is. But I, I do remember when the first feud happened, I was like, what is he going to do for the second feud? Because I didn't oh. know if he was going to only do, like, 1940s things or There's what. no more feuds. I know. I'm What's like, uh, there's a lot. So Maybe this is he was going to do fjords. Fjords. <laughs> little, a little different, but Battling okay. Battling fjords. <laughs> there is an icing isolation thing that does happen. So the little is on theme. So this uh, season two feud, Capote, which is Truman Capote versus the Swans, which is he coined the phrase the Swans, which is his group of women that he befriended and they took him in and they are New York socialites, like the creme de la creme, the most powerful. And really the focus is on four of them, although there are quite a few. And he is at sort of the height of his fame because he was a writer and wrote Breakfast at Tiffany's. Also, he had written a true crime novel in Cold Blood. He was super famous for right. that. He himself, also an out gay male, and just the way he spoke and like so gossipy, just people were drawn to him. He was a true life character because he was so of himself. I mean, there's just never anybody else like Truman Capote. So he's able to, and I do mean like infiltrate because this was a very insulated, small world New York society. It's like American royalty. So you almost are like a Rockefeller is going to marry a Pally because the clubs you belong to, oh, the mm -hmm. networking. So to be able to get in there and as a gossip, I mean, that's basically what he was. Every single one of them thought he's my best friend. He would never betray me. Oh, uh-oh. Mm-hmm. So where we really start this journey is that he is falling on hard times because he has a manuscript due for his next book. But because of his fame, he's sort of living just the famous lifestyle versus getting down and doing the work oh, to actually mm -hmm. continue it. You know, he took an advance. But he hasn't delivered the work uh -uh. and he's drinking a lot and going to bathhouses and just not focusing on his J-O-B. Yeah, he's enjoying his life, not oh. doing his job right. to get that next book done. Right. So you meet the four main women and listen, the casting, I'm sure when you get the call from, you know, Ryan Murphy Productions would like to call you in for a casting. I mean, no one's saying no. And, you know, he has his, because they're an anthology and because he likes to work with the same actors. Jessica Lange is, you know, really the OG grand dame diva of his casting, and she's in it. Love An it. interesting role. Not one of the, the swans, though. But he has his repertoire theater, people practically, where he has created this little ensemble, and Naomi Watts plays what is Babe Pally, who is the queen bee, or the main swan of these women. And then Diane Lane plays Slim Keith, Chloe Sevigny plays C.V. Guest, and Calista Flockhart plays Lee Raswell, who was the sister of, did anybody guess? No. What? Are you guys serious? What? Jackie O. I mean, what? I do not know this. I don't know. Okay, all right. paying attention to this stuff? So, and now there's also other fabulous women cast in it, but those are the main four swans. Isn't Demi Moore in it? Yes, but she's not a swan. Ah. But she's one of the crux that starts this, what is our modern day, we would call ghosting. Oh. Mm. So he, because he's, sh I don't want to say short of material, he's never short of material, but he had this 
idea for a script. But like I said, sitting down and doing the work and writing, he wasn't really interested in doing that anymore. It was like living the lifestyle and being a drunk and just going from party to party was more of his interest. So he basically meets this character, John O'Shea, in a bathhouse and becomes his manager, quote unquote. Is and this based on a real person? Yes. Oh, okay. And um, he encourages them like, your material's all right here with these women because they'd all go to lunch in New York and these lunches were hilarious because it was basically alcohol and smoking and gossip. I mean, it seemed like Very they rarely ate lunch, yeah. their meal. But it was a famous restaurant in New York, La Cote Basque, and it is one of those you go to be seen and where your table is, the hierarchy and all those elements. And they had this round table, which totally reminded me of this play, The Women. And it's like, you know, the cattiness, you know, you're looking over at a table, looking over Demi Moore because she's basically been cast out her character. Mm. She played Anne Woodward in this show and her husband been killed and Truman feels like she murdered him. Oh. So, and he's such a gossip. He's like, let me change the names, but you all know who it is. It's like, oh my God, Truman. And it's one of those things in life. If someone is gossiping to you about a mutual friend, guess what they're doing when you're not there? They're oh, gossiping yeah. Yeah. about you. Mm -hmm. That these women did not understand that or were so shocked. He wrote an article for Esquire magazine in 1975. And it was called Le Cote Basque 1965, which is sort of its prime luncheon era. Like you had to get dressed and you were going to lunch there. And drinking and smoking, ordering another bottle, and just gossiping on all your girlfriends. He fictionalized it, but it is like, you know, changing a name from Joanne to Anne. I mean, it was like that, <laughs> like almost on the nose. Very light masking right. of who he was talking about. And here's the deal. There are certain people that he should not have spilled some of their laundry. And Babe Pally, played by Naomi Watts, that was a huge catastrophic mistake for him. Because then the four swans, and this is really the crux of the whole story, decide to ghost him oh. out of their lives. It is so fabulous. It is the ultimate, like, he has FOMO like you would not believe. Mm. How he tries to get himself back in there. I can't even imagine how he would have lost his mind social media to see the parties and all the things he was no longer being invited to or included in. Oh, and he man. has to be sort of cast away to Hollywood, which to him is absolutely beneath New York society absolutely beneath it there is an excellent sort of transitional what is happening thanksgiving in the upper crust society when they all go to florida and he was invited but then disinvited and where he ends up in hollywood at would you would think johnny carson's house i mean you would think shouldn't he be happy that seems pretty good oh my no I mean, bad Oh, I like it's fabulous. It feels like he thrives on drama, and that feels like the New York side of the world, whereas the Los Angeles side is put up a facade and don't let anyone know what your problems are. Keep it going until you fail. Well, it was also about pedigree. And so this New York society, you know, like I said, they kind of with you know, within their circle marry each other. So it's the country clubs. It's going back to the fathers of our country and true wealth and huge properties and where did you go to school and how important that was and who did you marry and you know were you a debutante that is not Hollywood you could become famous and have come from some small town or farm in the middle of America and you know you hadn't traveled Europe you were not sophisticated so that's why it did not appeal to him and you're going to watch what is basically how you destroy that is their goal to destroy him Oof. really 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 led by diane lane she is like slim keith is not letting up on the pedal to basically run him over listen most of these women had their wealth or their power through their marriages oh mm -hmm. and slim keith she was a fashion icon american socialite I think she's married three times to so all very wealthy, powerful men. Mm. And these women, because these men would go off into the industries of America and run them, whether it be television, steel, you know, all those type of things, their lives were completely run by their wives. The social book, the schedules, all of that. The dinners, you know, the china, the chefs. I mean, just that's their thing. The sets, the costume, the attention to detail. Incredible. Bravo to the entire production company. You're just like, I just want to go there. Can I go there? This is where they're kind of, I'm like, this is the homage. Like, this is very um, Chloe Sevigny's, like, vibe in it. Oh, uh -huh. Yeah, a little bit. So, really, you are now going to watch this complete group of women turn on Truman Capote. And he's not going to go down easy. So, now, um, have you said who plays Truman Capote? Oh, 
Tom Hollander, not to be mistaken with Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Oh, gosh. Because there's a great story how Tom Hollander, I don't know how this happened, but he I got... I think they had the same agent at the time as this he part got, of the story. Yeah, yeah, he got some residual check, which is like, you know, payment after the fact. And it was from the Spider-Man movies. And they just didn't realize, like, no, it's... <laughs> Hollander, you, you oh, know, no. the ER is not correct on the end. So he opened up and like literally almost like fainted because it was like, oh, what the hell? It's like, oh, it's not for you. It's not for oh, anything no. you did. Yeah, he was telling that story on some interview Ooh. show and it is crazy. You're I'm like, sure there's oh, a moment no. he's like, oh my God, I just won the lottery. It's like, no, okay. No, sorry. You American audiences might know him most recently. He's had a little bit of up tick in our radar because he's British and done extremely well there like one bath does and things like that White Lotus last season with Jennifer Coolidge he's gay you're trying to kill me yeah he was he one was of the, the gay yeah, he was, he was the, the main. main one and you know that did not end well for him so he will not be in season three of White Lotus spoiler alert but um you know just he's, yeah, he's great he's fantastic I mean the cast Demi Moore is fabulous Molly Ringwald she looks great and she's playing Johnny Carson's wife a big shout out to Treat Williams. This was his last project. God bless his soul. I love him. I've always loved his work. And he plays Bill Pally. And he has an interesting arc that you really kind of start off kind of hating him. And even by episode two or three, you are rooting for him and loving him. And like I said, so many of these characters, if you are a fan of Ryan Murphy and his projects, you're going to recognize them. So it's just the whole group. So I could not, you know, recommend it more. Like I said, you cannot sit at my lunch table unless you like this. And it's based on a book by Lawrence Lemers, Capote's Women, A True Story of Love, Betrayal, and a Swang Song for an Era. And that's really accurate. Mm. So far, most of the episodes are directed by Gus Van Sant. And some of you might know him from Goodwill Hunting. He redid the original Psycho. One of my favorites to die for with Nicole Kidman. That goes way back, but 1985, it's so good. So, you know, I was curious how he would do this because he has such an aesthetic. <sighs> Nailing it. Fabulous. And because there are crossovers, reflections back and flashbacks. But so, and I just think that it's so well done, but I mean, you kind of expect that level from Ryan Murphy, and it's written by, the actual teleplay is written by John Robin Bates, and um, from the book adapted, I think the mater source material is probably pretty fabulous, and Truman Capote was such a character that, I, you know, I think the leaps they're taking are, probably most of them are somewhere, you, it's not a huge leap, because he was such a notorious human being. Mm. So, um, I could not recommend it more, and that is Feud, Capote versus the Swan. <laughs> Wait, did you say where it's available? Yes, FX then Hulu. It's oh, eight FX episodes. Okay. Um, 